put Invincible into a story now to the show. So I, I didn't know about it. You guys said, "Hey, what, what should I watch?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's an insight. This? That's an insight here on the Nerd Psycho Comic Book Show. Welcome to this week's show. We are going to be talking about In. Invincible, the show on Amazon, uh, where it is extremely gory, even gorier than Boys, which I thought was a 10 of 10. I guess I have to reevaluate my terms of gore on TV. That's how crazy this is. Before we jump in, uh, you know, we are the nerds. I am SC Hitch. Uh, that's DP Brown. You're going to hear from next. And that's Michael down below, the man of one name, but a thousand faces. And we love them all. They're all very cute. Uh, Woo! <laughs> DP, why don't you tell everybody where they can reach us, how they can reach us. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you go on our, on our site to get all our fees um, on our social media. We are at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Facebook, and also on Twitter. Make sure that when you are listening to podcasts, you are to, on TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, Google, Pl- you know, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Leave us some feedback. You know, go on Facebook at Nerdcyclopedia. We are on there. So leave us some feedback. Also, nurse at nerdcyclopedia.com. You can also leave us some feedback there. If you are checking us out on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit also hit the notification. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Wow, smooth. Been better this time. All uh, right. <laughs> so this week we're going to talk. So this show is. Is, is a really excellent deconstruction of superhero mythology uh, at, its, at its heart. And, and, and honestly, you know, this is the type of thing that really hits a sweet spot, right? It's subversive for me. It goes, uh, you know, it goes counter to expectation. It is realistic in how it depicts the consequences of its own physics, which I think is brave <laughs> and very awesome. Uh, this is a show that wants us to think about what super what it would mean if there really were superheroes and just like watchmen a show and a a series that we covered in a lot of depth before check that worked out dp this feels to me like it's set in a world where you know actions have real consequences isn't that right yeah i mean you got the you know the guy omni man well i guess let's let's do a little bit of you know history this this the invincible concept and comic book has been out since 2003 so this is sort of like uh um it's like it's about time this came out imagine like you know a a book and everything that's just now getting adapted you know as far as a comic book it it it, it took a while for it to come to like you know the the small screen or the big screen i think it was actually supposed to be a, a movie at some point but they decided to go with the small screen you know animated um it's by robert kirkman of walk of the walking dead fame so this was actually his first it, it, it was this book was done before he started to, you know getting popular with the walking dead so he got his feet wet with you know image comics with doing this work with invincible before he got really popular with the walking dead so we see what kind of brain you know um and concept that this guy is working with he really broke down like the the superhero um deconstruction with what if you know a superman was doing this what if justice league was that you know and we're seeing that in this animated you know series you know uh, vis-a-vis like you know the comic book and everything um I have to say that the first couple episodes, especially that first episode, it took me a minute to 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 really get into, especially the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to watch it maybe about two or three times. It kind of reminded me how it was when the Game of Thrones when it first came out. It took me about five or six times to really get into that show <laughs> because I just wasn't really like you know all into like the concept. And then. Um, Cause I, I mean, I'm a brief for real. I thought it was just a regular, like, okay, animated, you know, Batman type. Okay, this is another superhero. So he's doing his regular. Okay, I got powers, and I'm going through like growing pains as far as being a teenager, like a Spider Man or whatever. And then the episode hits you mm-hmm. at the <laughs> end credits, like, oh my goodness, <laughs> what the heck was? It? Said, what am I watching? I had no idea that I, it was going to get that bloody, you know. Superman kills the Justice League. What, what? 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 What is that? Incredible, Michael. You are wearing the emblem of, of the uh, the man in regular comics who is always uh, haunted by visions of this moment, right? Uh, that is Bruce Wayne, <laughs> who's haunted by this. What? What are your immediate impressions on 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 this first set episode? What do you think about Invincible? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Sam. Like, you know, just like watching it before, it's like, okay, the boy's trying to get into his own, and you know, it is. 
his heartful dad's going to teach him how to be a superhero and they're going to join the the just you know the the guardians of the globe (laughs) (laughs) and then all of a sudden real fast that turn that turn real fast quick left Mm -hmm. and as sam says i mean just the way that he you know i mean I, I don't even want to say spoiler at this point in time because I mean if you've seen it you've seen it but I mean he just rips through the Guardians of the Globe like it was nothing like they're just toys and the Guardians of the Globe are supposed to be the, their image version of you know the Justice League basically yeah. you know I mean mm-hmm. you I mean you have all these people who are just you know a mockery and he just rips through them like it was nothing and it was just the blood and the the drawing and the artistry and it was just amazing amazing the blood just just going everywhere and yeah you could tell that they're like ripoffs from the justice league because he's oh, yeah. real blatant you know you got your your night hawk or whatever his night whatever dark the, way. the dark, dark way. way okay dark way dark <laughs> you, you you yeah. said our text page right you a dark wing duck and everything every time you said dark <laughs> way <laughs> dark way you got your um um uh, wonder yeah, woman, woman archetype yeah yeah war yeah, woman, woman. <laughs> Not, he has the most world. generic names, you know, for for these characters and stuff. But you know, I think that's just a whole setup to get us like, okay, what is what is this generic stuff? And then he just Omni Man. I mean, you know, uh, him chopping the head off and everything. I'm like, wow, this is so. He crazy. has exactly let, let, let one problem in the whole fast, fight. Right? Yeah, yeah. Run through the name. Run through the name. Yeah, yeah. So you have the immortal, you know, which is you know an indication of you know Superman basically. Uh-huh. War Woman, War obviously. Woman, I think Wonder, Wonder Woman. Who say mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. the Green Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> Martian Man. Hmm. Yeah, yeah Martian. <laughs> Martian Man. Red Rush. <laughs> That's the Flash. So they even yeah. just kept the Flash's color, just Red Rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red Rush. I go run real fast. That's Darkwing Duck over here. Oh man. And then, and then of course Aquarius. Oh Poor yeah, Aquarius uh, yeah. Just mocked at everything he does. <laughs> he, he was so happy to get out the ocean, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he wasn't so happy. That, he wasn't that happy. Uh, well, we'd ask. I could ask him what he what he was thinking, but we've seen. Uh, I mean, we saw his brains. So, <laughs> Omni Man has exactly one problem in this fight, and it's Red Rush, who who's we find the Red Rush's perception is slowed down. And I, and I, I thought that, that was pretty that. unique. I thought that yeah. was pretty unique. So it's a lot like the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix, how uh, the Scarlett Johansson voiced um, AI says, oh, I, I have like 30, 300,000 boyfriends because every millisecond with you is like 100 billion years for me because, you know, the time keeps dilating for them. And it just, rem- it just reminded me of that. But then you see like, you know, Omni-Man could have killed Red Rush in a lot, a lot of different ways. And... <laughs> And he chose to slowly smash his head while the rest of his body tried frantically to beat him to death. And he did so while he took all that damage that it didn't seem like he really needed to. <laughs> it didn't seem like he had to take that much damage, but he did. It's just, it just so like... and Because the, the rest of the fight was so fast. It was just immediate, boom, done. Like you know what I mean? One punch, pretty much. That's it. Uh, right. It does. It doesn't. It didn't take much to kill Darkwing, and <laughs> no. <laughs> and, now, and, and War Woman just turns her head. I mean, come on. Oh, oh, the man. violence of just the way yeah. the fulcrum everybody. of the show turns on this. And in, in this pastiche <clears throat> of the Justice League, which is you know we talk about post. I've talked about postmodernism on this show all the time, and pastiche is one of those things. Uh, th- this sort of story where you sort of are mixing genres between you know a horror story and i feel like you have to call you know the the end then points here horror stories and and superhero comics and talking about superheroes as a as a really you know examples of the grotesque you know in addition to examples of the super powerful and it's so interesting to see how you know like they all sort of acknowledge omni man superior to them but they don't you know they don't kind of realize how superior. I think that they sh- they set up all this in that opening scene mm-hmm. where the Guardians of the Globe are a pretty well oiled machine and just you know beat up those cl- the clone dogs. <laughs> who are just yeah, really yeah, the, the, yeah the... <laughs> you're the clone. No, I'm the original. You know those guys are, are really great. But and and Omni Man seems to be like, you know, my wife was asking me what's going on and I was like, these guys all seem to be like seven or eights out of ten, 
but Omni Man seems to be at a ten out of ten, and then that's that's very incorrect. Omni Man is more like a five thousand out of five thousand. <laughs> these guys are like right. 10 out of 10. All right, they're not even you know even in comparison. Oh uh, yeah, they're not and, they're not even in a ballpark. And they're supposed to be like you know the the biggest threat to Omni Man. You know, <laughs> and he the just question, rips through him. So the the opening. So the questions. You know, we have this we have this long introductory sequence with with Mark. He's played by uh, by Stephen Wynn of the Wall of the Walking Dead, I believe. They play Glenn, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. I'm not a big yeah, Walking Dead guy. Yeah. So you're another right. Rod another Kirkman <clears throat> property. So we get a little bit of you know a little bit of a shady reference, which I like. I like those lampshade references. That's really cool. He does a really great job with with Mark, and Mark is played. You know, it's so interesting that they play this as two stories kind of at the same time. Mark's story, which is very you know, paint. It is sort of paint by numbers origin story, right? Like if this was mm -hmm. if this was like a lot like Spider Man one from nineteen ninety nine or something, you know it's very paint by numbers, mm -hmm. and then there's this this exact opposite current story running underneath it that is exactly the opposite where everything is subversive and backwards and you know the the thing that they are really emphasizing here with Omni Man is you know how safe you are with with some with a being that's like that powerful, exactly as safe as they want you to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean <clears throat> i mean if you if you really think about the like the whole superman concept i guess if if this was i guess if superman was real and he was good we would be very lucky hmm. that he's a good guy you know that he's not here to conquer us i mean and the, the reality of it is you know if superman was i guess real he would if, no matter how good he is you know he could have the best heart and everything he still would be feared by governments and like, you know, um, you know, just just people in the world and everything. It's not it's not a concept that you can just think of that that people just wholeheartedly accept because this man is just all powerful. He could do anything at any time at the whim of, of, of you know, his thing and Omni Man here in this in this universe so far. He's holding, you know, we, we, we see him at the end as he's being this this crazy guy and everything. Um, it seems like he's holding that part of himself down. Yeah, and he does not have any weaknesses uh, that is known of. Yeah, him. yeah, so that's how like do you crazy. Stop a man like, how do you stop all him? being and has no weaknesses? You know. Yeah. So what's his deal? This is that. This is the interest. But that's what it, what brings the interesting, really interesting questions into the right. mix. What, what What is his deal? What's right, his deal? Exactly. Because if it was just destroying the planet and taking it over, he could just do that. We see. And, and what's great about this second episode. And how it ends with the destruction of the aliens, and there, and they should have picked a different planet for whatever. You know, <laughs> really like should have that. picked a different yeah. planet. You know, it's this, it's this cathartic, satisfying. Like it is their fault. Like they didn't have to come back the third time, right? They could have just stayed. <laughs> right. No one told them to keep doing this, and and so like it's a little bit funny because they did bring it on themselves after a fashion. But the overpowered response, and it's like taking a flamethrower to a nest of like tent worms. You know what I mean? That's exactly what he does. He just burns them all the way out. It's 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 so incredible. So we know he could do this and be home late for dinner, right? That's all it would right. take. Oh, uh, don't worry. Deciding he, he'll to. be back. He'll be late for dinner. <laughs> so the question for me, you know, what is his what is his deal? Why does he not? What is he try? What is his end condition here? So he destroys the guardians of the globe after after Mark gets his powers. Not after Mark develops his powers. Not after Mark becomes an equal to him. When he discovers them, he, he kills these guys. And right. he could have done it at any point he wanted. He didn't do it when when he, you know, she had the kid. He didn't do it right when he got there. He did it as soon as, as Mark found out he had powers. Well, Interesting stuff. You you can you can <laughs> sort of tell that um it's it, it, we're, we're talking about like his weaknesses and everything. It's some it's something that's holding him back. Mm -hmm. You know. Why does he have a? Why is he just taking his time as with with a family? Like you know, what is like what is his what is that whole deal? Why why did he you know give birth or his wife give birth? Why why did they have relations to give birth to Mark? You know <laughs> why why is that? You know uh, he he did he need another? Does he need another spawn? You know um to to do whatever he needs to do or whatever. It's like why is he wasting his time if he's this all powerful being with just a mundane family type? Now he does say one important thing that you guys <clears throat> notice in the 
after he just, you know, right before he, you know, rips through all the aliens, mm -hmm. he says, Earth is not yours to conquer. Just remember yeah. that line when he says that. Yeah, so so there's a real, it's a weird, weird sense of, and I got this sense, uh, and I, you know, of property. There's a real sense of property, like like what Omni-Man's deal is, is that he's like, like a gardener. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, we got to get the landscaping done. And in, <laughs> and in his universe, that means, you know crazy monsters from the eighth galaxy and aliens from the 40th dimension from a different time stream. You know, that that's just his, as, uh, you know, as, uh, as Sandra O oh says, right. That's just, uh, oh, that's Tuesday. It doesn't bother me. Right. <laughs> it's just what's going on. Uh, it, it's, it's so, it's so bizarre. It's almost like, you know, it's like, <sighs> there's this like galactic defense force. What are they protecting the galaxy from? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, like I said, I've watched all the episodes, so I'm not exactly sure what episode <laughs> this does happen in. When he, to, when he talks to his son about he, he, why he was sent there and they were sent there to protect Earth and everything. Yeah. Was that in like one of the first two episodes? Yeah, he sits there. He's sitting on the roof with his kid telling him about okay. about yeah. how how his people sent him to Earth to improve it and bring it up to galactic standards so it could join the galactic world, right? Yeah. And right. Then so, twenty so, so minutes you, you later, know, he said there to be a good guy and everything. You know? Yeah, just to help you out, guys. <laughs> I, I needed the help. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe this is just just my bias coming out, but I've been watching um, "Exterminate All the Brutes," which is a documentary on HBO Max by Raul Peck, and it's about hmm. colonization and how you know white supremacy was created to justify colonization and the importation of slaves from Africa, right? Like it was all a construct because it was so economically profitable. Uh -huh. And it makes you wonder like, what is this, what, you know, what is the colonization relationship that these guys want to have with earth? Like, what is that relationship supposed to look like? Cause obviously, <clears throat> you know, he's sent there for a reason. He's sent there for a reason. Right. He's not, he's not just doing whatever he wants. You know, he has right. this sort of family relationship, but it doesn't seem ungenuine. It seems like that's the point. Yeah. 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 And and like I said, we were talking about weaknesses. Mm -hmm. This may end up being his Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, you know, he may not have anything physical that okay, like a kryptonite, the typical like um physical property that, you know, you right. put up in front of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark so may if Mark, if Mark was like vulnerable up until the point where, oh, now he's not, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe that was his Achilles' heel. Is you could eventually threaten the kid, but now you really can't, right? He's like well, a, he's, he's invincible now. Little, little <laughs> Omni. <right? laughs> yeah, that's literally his name, Scott. <laughs> oh, you idiot! Why do you even have a podcast? <laughs> oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're talking like about, a lot about Ami, man. He is a very, very uh, we're talking attractive. We're about the villains on our show, and it's, uh, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's very much because of me, because I am fascinated by villainy. <laughs> also. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we got to get time to the title character, you we know. We do got to talk about Mark. Mark. Right. We got to talk about his plot. Yeah, but look, he's just a typical teenager trying to find himself. My trying daddy, to find his way. My daddy <laughs> told me, he said, son. And saving the world. Yeah. <laughs> my daddy told me, son, when you serve a meal, People remember the meat. That's what my daddy told me. So, so this is why we talk about the stuff I want to talk about first. And, I, and I'm obsessed with villainy. We watch. I watch a lot of true crime with my wife. We were just watching the first 48. So look, it's this is not, you know, this hey, is not some hey, sort of passive. You, you got you, you got to pull them in, and then you know once you pull them in, and then you you know you bring in like the, is, the other the other pieces of the meal that you say the meat. We talked about the meat, so you're right. If I tell you that. If I tell you that Mark is a, is Peter Parker, except his dad's still around and it's on me, like, like you pretty much get it. And that's because the thing that makes this story unique is is what the villain is doing. We say this about the boys, and this is also an Amazon show. It's it's the villain that sets the table. It's the villain that's how are we going to, you know, how is a superhero going to deal with a villain who's wearing the same sort of clothing as them, right? How do you deal with that? And that, and that I think is the real central crux of this show. And, and that makes this a good place to talk, to stop. So we're going to stop talking about Omni-Man. And when we come back, we are going to talk what, about Invincible. What, what, what quick thing? What, what quick thing about it? Oh, about, well, I was thinking about the show in general. Yeah, yeah, go on. Just that's the lead. The stars and actors and everything of this show. That, oh, that yes. They, they cram oh, yeah, in here. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, our, the cameos, the voices. <clears throat> I mean, like, this is our star-studded show that, that these people are doing. And so I, I applaud them for that. And really, with 
with the study cast like amazon is the perfect like like streaming app and i'm gonna credit amazon streaming app which i guess it's probably a really stupid idea for me to do here but their streaming app's really great because when you pause like if you hear a voice and you're like who is that you can pause and it just tells you and it's like okay great you know what i mean i did uh hitch i love that about you know because i you pause you can all you they not only do they tell you like to cast a character i mean i'm sorry actors that portray like the, you know the character and stuff they also give you whatever music is playing yeah. because they have a lot of like you know yeah. contemporary music you know within this show too you know if you're on like the app or like watching it on your thing you can tap on the thing and it pulls up the the music and you're playing the music and everything i mean that's just crazy it's the future, man. What do we say? This is what that's one of those things I couldn't have conceived of ten years ago. It's really cool. No, so so innovation, either. innovation in the in the in in this this sphere is always great. Um, yeah, great cast. You know, multiple like Oscar nominee cast. It's really kind of crazy. You know, you have Sandra O oh in this. Um, you know, Seth Rogen does a guest spot, which uh, you know always is always great for me. I always mm -hmm. I think Seth Rogen's great. Um, Mark J, Hamill, J, 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 J.K. Simmons as Omni Man. So what an I mean, excellent casting! What, what an excellent, 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 excellent. Wonderful, wonderful. The, the, the way his voice and the way he just you know does his inflections <laughs> as a father figure, yeah. you know, towards um you know Mark and everything, and then he 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 <laughs> ends up you know making his turn, <laughs> and it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, J.K. Simmons is coming through as far it's as that. Excellent work. Excellent and work. I love how they still give him his hair. Uh, yeah. yeah you can tell who he is it's really yeah, great you can like, tell who he is right 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 really great uh, uh walton goggins of course is always just so so i couldn't so recognize awesome. him i couldn't re i said that's walter goggins that's not the voice i um remember in justified or um what other show did he play on he played on a couple other shows he but he i remember the shield it's called the shield yeah yep yeah, yeah, yeah shield yeah uh -huh. he always plays those those sort of slimy guys that hook yeah. up like i am yeah. i am in some ways legitimate or am i you will now buy this weapon from me for some reason <laughs> and i will charge a billion dollars more than i said i would That's uh, a funny thing that i brought up to hitch earlier that we were talking about before we started here right. that the school was named reginald bell johnson and if you know who reginald bell johnson is he plays carl winslow in yes. family matters Yes. And, and he's a principal he in the show. His character is Principal Winslow. Yeah, he's a principal. That is that is hilarious. Principal man. Winslow. <laughs> they, 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 oh, his, his name is Principal Winslow. Yeah, oh no! Reginald, so Reginald I, did, I didn't pick that up. Wow, that principal is funny. Principal Winslow, who's the principal of Reginald Bell Johnson. That was one of the moments I had to pause and Wonderful. find out. This oh, true? that is crazy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I didn't even pick that up. Wow. The, the, tw the pretzels. The pretzels. This show turns turns in and on, yeah, on they, itself. They, it's, they, it's, they. it's it's excellent. So when we come back, we're going to break now. I think that's okay. good. We'll go to break. And then when we come back, um, we'll talk about Mark and Mark's life and sort of the actual real plot of the show, which kind of carries us into, um, man, the, the second episode with the, you know, with the um, Teen Strike Force or whatever the, whatever the, oh, yeah, the, the, the Teen, Titans. Teen Titans. Teen Titans. <laughs> Teen Titans knockoffs <laughs> with then, Jillian then, well, Jacobs and Jason Mansukas and like some some really great acting here right some other really great characters so we'll talk about these guys and mark and, and their general plot that's a little bit more uh straight laced a little bit more abc it has a little bit more sense to it and then we'll Be round back. off with the venom trailer we'll talk a little bit about that too sure we like venoms yay all right we'll be back here comes the promo of some sort i'm gonna make michael do it this week michael you're gonna talk about the show all right bye Parker, whose dad is the evil Superman. <laughs> that's that's pretty close because, like, even some of the, you know, even some of the scenes, and it's kind of it's interesting to think about, like, when this when this book came out, you know, because it came out in two thousand three, which is right at the zenith of the Toby uh, the Toby Spider Man, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a, really the peak, and and so I, it's, it makes sense that the this story would really beat for beat be very similar to that story. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoy. I always enjoy the the part where the bully like r- gets outclassed real bad. <laughs> that's always my favorite part of these. Right? I don't know. I just hate bullies. I think that's it. Uh, what's your favorite part of the way they treat the high school here, Michael? What What is your favorite apart from, of course, that it's called Reginald Vale Johnson High School? Uh, what's your favorite thing about this? <laughs> apart that it's called that. I yeah, mean, yeah. Apart from that. I, I mean, you're looking at it just like at the normal high school like uh, you know opportunity. You have like a. You know, the nerdy kid with his nerdy best friend who are outcasts. And then, you know, he steps up to a bully and gets the hot girl. You know I mean? It's just like, it's just the typical Peter Parker story. I mean, come on. And then and then you introduce uh, the other t- teenage, you know, kids that go to the school who's also a superhero, too. You know? <laughs> Gotta be another superhero when you all teenager involved. Another superhero? Involved. Something in the water right. in this town. Yeah, yeah, pretty, right. pretty so, much. So, uh, so then you got you know the the Teen Titans, you know the, the, the it's it's it, the team team. It's, it's funny because, yeah, it's funny how casual their superhero ness is and everything. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're just okay. Where you're this, all right. Well, you know, no no sense of um keeping identities um to to themselves and everything. I mean, I guess Mark does his best too. But the um, other superhero, you know, girl or whatever, she I, I forget her name. <laughs> so hashtag hey DP if um if you want to come at me as far as Atom that. Eve, you mean, right? Yeah, Adam Eve, Adam Eve. Adam, Adam Atom, Eve, yeah. Atom, 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 Atom spelled A T O M and a delicious Atom. pun. Atom. Oh the robot. Robot is voiced by Zachary Quinto, who was Spock. You know, and um he was also in the hero show, you know, mm-hmm. from back in the day and everything. So um yeah, speaking of voice casting and everything, but um but yeah, Pittsburgh I mean zone. You, you, Pittsburgh Yeah. Zone. Oh yeah, Pittsburgh zone is exactly Pittsburgh zone. Um so yeah, you got like the typical like um, you know, it, it, it seems it's it things get relatable when it when it comes down to high school. Everybody can relate to being in high school, mm-hmm. you know, right, going right. through like the trials and tribulations of girlfriends <laughs> and wanting to be accepted and um having the to the growing pains of having to worry about classes and stuff like that. Everybody can relate to that. So whenever these type of shows take it back to like the the high school stuff, I'm always down for it. Right, exactly. You know, you have your classifications. You got your bully. You got your cool group. You got your nerds. You got your you, know, <laughs> you, got, you got everything going. Yeah, for yeah, you. yeah. In the typical the typical high school stuff. setting, of course. Fully you know, And then you got your superheroes. <laughs> and this dude, and then this kid takes a beating, and everyone talks about it. Which, if I remember. High school is probably something that was pretty true. There were some there were some fights, and you'd hear about it for six months. You know what I mean? So everyone was talking about that stuff. Uh, It's interesting how they portray this sort of you know um, how how Mark is sort of interested in Amber, right? Like that's kind of where where his direction is. Yeah. And and I kind of and I kind of like that he's not that, that he doesn't really get knocked off that trajectory for the most part. He's pretty much pretty stable on that. And I'm glad that 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 they they kind of kept that that vector. I'm, I, it made me happy to see that. Yeah, uh, to see they could have just trade up. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, they could because it was you know Adam was he was a superhero, so I I, I got to level up and you know you know go I'm that route. Say what you want about Amber? She can't create <laughs> you know magical magical protective screen. So I mean you know in a fight she's not going to be as valuable. I mean that's just the way it is. Unfortunately. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I could have easily went on that vein as far as like just being this old tropey and stuff. And I think, like you said, it made you happy, which was, I guess, the the um was it was it was it was the reason why it made you feel that way and everything. Yeah. It made the show was going in the right direction, but by subverting our expectations as far as that. So plus, that's so that's plus, a well written show. And, and plus, you know, as a superhero, the superhero has to have the the human girlfriend. You can't have the the girlfriend that's a superhero. Because then they just work together all the time. So he's he's going to run off, and then the girlfriend has a question where you keep going. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this reminds yeah, me of yeah, there you go. You right, guys remember right. when the, the first time The Rock hosted SNL and he played like Clark Kent slash Superman and he kept like like going into like a, like a closet and coming out like wearing a half Superman suit and everyone's pretending like he's like they can't tell he's Superman. You know what I mean? I, I, I got a lot of vibes like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some really cool stuff. What did you? guys think of this um what'd you guys think of the uh the teen team that were introduced here uh you know we have rexplode we have <laughs> you know uh we have robot robot who is the tactician mm-hmm. who's definitely a robot 
Uh, we have duplicate <laughs> who can right. make extra right. copies. Guess what her of power is? Right. right. Uh, that's they really funny, nice man. Simple. <laughs> oh, they're right. killing me faster than I can make new ones. Like, why are you doing that, Ben? Why? Uh, yeah, I, I'm like, okay, she her 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 her, her powers duplication, but her bodies are just getting pummeled in. Like, wow, really? <laughs> just cut it in half, like, and she's yeah, like, ah, she's just yeah, just more. just casually and everything. She just keeps replicating herself. I mean, I, I was sort of like, you know, wonder well, what's the story behind that. How does yeah. that? How does that even work? Like, you know, do do you get worn down after a certain period of time and everything? Mm -hmm. It's probably like more detailed in the comic and stuff, which I'm sort of like trying to catch up on and everything. I mean, she's but, a side character. You don't you don't worry about side characters. And <laughs> why, Sam? You don't worry about the why. Not not not, not in this show and everything. Yeah, I right. I can appreciate that. Can <laughs> yeah, appreciate they're that. they're off limits. You, you don't mess. more depth about robot later in the in the series. Duplicate? No, no, no. She's just the side character. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait until you see what they do with duplicate later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, duplicate. <laughs> it's a hard yeah. show to stop watching. I mean, we've all been, we've all, we're all sort of talking about it. We, I mean, I've watched another episode and a half after this. And then Michael, you finished it. I mean, Dupree, you might have watched it weeks ago and then told us you wanted to watch it. So, you know, <laughs> this is this was uh, DP is the one who picked this. I, I like talking about this a little bit because. It's always good. We we take turns a little bit picking it's, what we it's, want to watch. It's, it's, it's fresh and new and everything, mm -hmm. and it's something that you know um, that that we just needed to talk about because really this show is like um it's it's been really popular in like you know pop culture because number one, it's an hour long drama. It's not the 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 this it's not a half an hour like your typical Batman animated series, Superman or whatever. Um, it's the uh, um more than like you know forty minutes. And it's not typical of what you would see coming from animated American fare. Now, typical yeah. of what you would see on like, you know, anime with like, um, you know, Japanese animated stuff, you could um, get like, you know, hour, hour and a, um, you know, longer type episodes, but typical American fare, if it's not a comedy, like a family guy or, you know, Rick and Morty or a Simpsons, you're not getting anything longer than like 30 minutes. This is like a good, a 45 to almost an hour chunk show sometimes you fill in some of the episodes but i like the way it's paced so you could get the full development of these characters instead of just a one-two punch and then that's it and some of the episodes it actually feels like it could have been done in live action mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah absolutely agreed i mean but i mean this might be the new way of how the animation's gone i mean i know you watched the series of harley quinn on hbo max and yeah you know, yeah. the, viol the violence of that show really, you know, was the but, appeal of it. So, I mean. Har Har and, Harley Quinn Harley Quinn was a comedy. This is a drama. Yeah. This is actual drama that you, you know, it, it's a, it has this, you know, humorous moments and everything. But it's some serious stuff that's got, you know, going on in oh. this show that's not oh, really yeah. played and, uh, for laughs. And the, the, human, the human death is, you know, worthy of Daniel Snyder's, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Zack Snyder. <laughs> they don't. They don't play around with the collateral damage on this show. No, 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 no they don't. No, no, There's 300 people. You're all gonna be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you, you know, we, we even get some some emotional, you know, with the mom and everything. You know, um, you know, we we get to see the good family dynamic with her. Um, you know, Omni Man and um, his 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 his, his, his real name is Nolan, right? Nolan. Yes. Yeah. Nolan, Nolan. Grayson in the show. Yeah. You know him and Mark. We see the you know family dynamic with them and how she appreciates like um she knows everything that's going on as far as superpowers and it's just, it's just funny how she's casual about him coming home late. As if this this is his job and he's just coming home from defeating the alien and everything. Okay, dinner's ready and everything. Come sit down for dinner. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, dad went. Dad went in the portal. Oh, that's it. Okay, like she's just like totally. Uh, really, really cool. uh, he'll be back. He'll be like, oh yeah, he'll be back. I've just yeah, never yeah. seen him get hurt before. Like that's oh, what she man. says. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's so indomitable. You know what I mean? It's what she's what she say to Mark. She says, "Does it make you feel? Does you have to feel good that you can physically do whatever you want?" I can't stop you. And it just stops. Him that was track. good. Hitch. Yeah, that was a that, good scene right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she uh, is, it's one of those, those things where, okay, if you, if a parent having a teenager mm -hmm. who's testing you, you know, um, he's finally coming to his adolescence and to his own and everything. And he's testing, you know, um, the fact, okay, I could do whatever I want. Why am I listening to you? You know, right. and that's something that that's going to tie down later down the line when it comes to challenging, um, you know, his dad and everything. 
Um, so you know him. He he has this thing with his mom that he's really tight and close to, and everything. And then he sort of breaks down. He he's just a teenager wanting to have you know his mom's acceptance and stuff. But he tests him, and his mom, which is did you know really thing that really made the scene was his mom just just sort of took him to task. You know, you think you yeah. could do all. You know, you could you, you think you could do all this because you're you know all powerful and stuff. But I'm still your mom, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Gotta listen to the mom. <laughs> yeah, and gotta listen to the mom. And Grayson does, and yeah, that, and that's I like that. I like that, or Mark does. I like I like that a lot because it says a lot about his character that he genuinely yes. he genuinely does believe all this stuff. He genuinely <laughs> does. But but you could tell that he also has his dad in him because you know he mm -hmm. snaps, you know he snaps on those aliens, and you know he has those moments where he can't control himself. Yeah, you know, yeah. And that, you know well, he gets that from his dad. Yeah, he he got his dad blood in him and everything. So I mean, of course that part is his dad is teaching him how to be a superhero. You know, that's the funny ironic thing about all this. His dad is teaching him how to be a good superhero, but his dad is evil. But his dad, <laughs> his dad is the expression of this. This his dad doesn't really teach him to be a superhero. His dad's really teaching him how to use his power. Yeah. But Mark has is his his heart is good. So that's one thing. Even he, he so he's teaching him how to do his powers and everything. But um, but Mark being a the good person that he is, is using his powers to like, you know, you know, help people and do all this stuff like a superhero is supposed to do. So there's sort of like the subversion of of their plan with Mark being this good character, and we know that Omni-Man is bad, you know, but Omni-Man is teaching him how to be this, how to be a superhero and everything, you know? Nah, so he's it's just teaching just, how it's, to do his powers. He's not teaching him how to protect people. You know, Omni-Man is the expression of this, this uh, idea <laughs> by a philosopher named Frederick Nietzsche, who is uh, very famous for this particular idea, which is called the Ubermensch, or the man who is above morality. And what, it, what the idea is, is at a certain point, of, a being becomes all powerful and he's saying this about god in the philosophy so it's not really blasphemous <clears throat> right. although it is a little bit but what he says is that person that that entity can become beyond morality because the things that they do could have a meaning deeper than we could in we could fathom and that's what that's the, the christian god that's what people say about the christian god uh that they're that he works in mysterious ways right that's the way they say it so it's interesting that there's this sort of idea at play that there is maybe another layer below all of this. And there's yeah. a reason that, you know, there's a reason that there needs to be two of these guys <laughs> instead of one of them. Yeah. And that's very important. Yes. That's, that's very important. Some <laughs> and we'll find out. And, you know, I'm, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not actually, you know, no spoilers from me. So we'll see, you know, we'll see about all that. Uh, any other, before we go uh, on to Venom, what other, do you guys have any other, final thoughts on these episodes of yeah Invincible. great 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 couple first episodes um like i said the shocker came with the um the thing at the um the 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 craziness that you know went on in the end the way i heard it was in the comics this sort this whole thing happened as well but it didn't happen in the first issue it took them like about 12 issues before this reveal the the first episode reveal came about and it was on the verge of being i was just reading up on the story it was on the verge of being canceled you know, and then um, Robert Kirkman, you know, introduced the, the um, you know, introduced the killing of the <laughs> Guardians of the Globe and the sales skyrocketed and everything, you know, <laughs> no, so it was no, on the verge. like a mass murder to, kill, to get the ratings up. You know, right? I mean, it, it was on the verge of being canceled. I mean, readership, it picked up a little bit, but not until that happened and it, and it just created like this whole storm where, you know, Nobody really expected something like that. And this was back in like the early 2000s where if you really think about it, there wasn't a lot of stuff, you know, happening like this. You know, this was begin the, the, the this was beginning the dawn of like a new age of superhero types and stuff with the boys and, you know, the um um, you know, the invincibles and stuff, the subversion red Superman Red Sun, uh, sort of just trying different things with heroic um archetypes and stuff you know as far as comic you know stuff um and it may sort of seem like half you know um old hat right now because we're just now getting invincible on like the screen and everything but came out it was a whole it was a whole new different thing the dark knight returns was still being sort of hailed as the yeah the ultimate 
in comic book. Like this is the current, like you know, this is the current best. That and Watchmen, and that was still from '85. This came out in 2003. So again, another product of this era of paranoia that we yeah. talk about so much. Where we talk about you know um, stuff produced in the in the wake of 9/11, 2002, yes. 2003. In the wake of 9/11, yes, that's where, what it was. Yep. where there's this paranoia, like what could happen to the protectors? What would happen if something happened to the Watchmen? Right. This different. It's a different. It's a different idea, and it's sort of all born of the fever dream that was September 11th, 2001. Interesting that interesting to see these themes sort of recur as we see, you know, uh, as we talk about a work of pastiche, uh, a postmodern pastiche where we have parody versions of everything. What if, you know, the Guardians of, you know, what if uh, the Justice League stunk? Like, what if they just weren't the, like, what if there was someone that was even more powerful than them that just showed up and told them their business, right? Uh, it's, 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 it's interesting to think about that and those were my college years, so that's when I was really, you know, reading a lot of Star Wars stuff. And yeah, well, good couple of episodes. Time. Yeah, great, great, great work. Uh, ending with the scourging of the aliens, just wonderful. What a great scene, because that scene does sink. It sinks because it tells us that uh, Deb knows everything. And she's correct, right? He's fine. And it tells us that what we saw at the end of the first episode was absolutely no accident. And this guy will just take care of any threat. Take yep. care of it. Yeah, like Michael said, I mean, the the Earth is not theirs to um, destroy and everything, or whatever he's. Earth is not yours to conquer. <laughs> yeah, yours is not yours to conquer. Yeah, right. yep. All so, right, and that is Invincible episodes one and two. So we'll be right back. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna put a bump in here. I'm not gonna put a whole promo. I'll put something okay. in here, and we'll be back with the Venom trailer. We'll be right back. I just watched the trailer. So we've seen it now. All of us have seen it. I'm the laziest one. So I watched it last. Uh, guys, what do you think about this sequel to Venom? Venom. Well, Garnage. I mean, just, I mean, just from the, um, you know, the clips alone, they start off playing from what worked well from the last movie was the interactions of uh, rock and Venom. You know, I mean, that was probably the highlight of the highlight. movie, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, so like the, the the interactions between them and the comedy between them. So I'm glad they continued on with that version of it. Um, uh, of course, I mean, the CGI looks good as well, too. I mean, Venom looked well and the brief one second view of Carnage that we got. I mean, it, it looked legit as well, too. And, you know, of course, no, no, we don't know what the story is going to be like of anything. But the CGI looked good and the interactions between Venom and, you know, Brock sounded good. So, other than that, I mean, it, it's hard to still fathom <laughs> a Venom and Carnage movie without the guy in the middle. Where is the guy? Who's the guy in the middle? But beyond that, you know, we have to move on from that. Ah, uh, the Maybe. vagaries of copyright law <laughs> it impacts us all. What do you think, DP Brown? I was underwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't know what I'm expecting nowadays from superhero, like you know, comic book movies and stuff we, like that. We expect Marvel. We I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Okay, if you're dealing with a Marvel character, you want Marvel quality, <laughs> you know. And this was not what, what 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 we got, you know. This is Sony quality. This is this is just something different, you know. It it, it the last the last bit of film felt real superhero trophy is what you which it was before the mcu came along what you got with the um the the old um daredevil movies the um old um you know ghost rider and stuff <clears throat> you got like the typical okay your, um uh, typical a b and c you know plots and stuff and just running through their whole okay well you got the villain he's you know i mean you got the um, main character He's doing some comedic stuff where, okay, I got to laugh, ha, 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 ha. And then um, you got the the villain, you know, he who he's going to clash with and everything. I mean, that's fine, I guess. Um, but things have come along so much better with, with, <laughs> with what we're seeing nowadays that I can't really, I can't really co-sign, like, you know, I can't really co-sign this movie. The, um, the last movie was just okay. It was okay to horrible. Um, this movie, this movie, this movie, this this trailer right here didn't make me any more, you know, enthusiastic. As Michael alluded to, where the heck is Spider Man? There's no yeah. no type of you no know, connection to that whatsoever. Now that we're seeing the Daily Bugle being read in the um 
in the um in the in that trailer we see the actual daily bugle so they're tying a little bit of it in you know um you know the the policeman is reading the papers and stuff and that's the guy from um boardwalk empire he, yeah. he was he Steven played Graham. um yeah 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 i like him so hopefully he's doing some really good stuff in this movie tom hardy i'm there for all day and the interaction between him and venom it was a little bit of funny stuff in the other movie so hopefully they step that up to a um you know, to a good degree here. Hopefully they step it up to the point where it's not corny, you know, how sequels like to, uh, you know, roll like the Like the leech, and... yeah. They need yeah. to, they, 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 sequels tend to lean in harder to what they felt, thought worked the first right. time and, and overdo it the next time. So right. this is so the feeling I'm getting. The <laughs> so um, I also love Woody Harrelson. I mean, yeah. yeah, he can play a crazy nutball guy any day. I mean, any day, any, any day. day. So hopefully he's not corny. So he, <laughs> yeah. so he plays a serial killer, obviously, because he's this he's, he's carnage. Right? Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so so let me ask you guys this. So these two these two guys, and and these are important pieces of Spider Man's Rose Gallery, certainly in the nineties when I was into this stuff, right? Yeah. <clears throat> carnage was on every cover, everything because he looks so cool. He looks cool. Right and black and looks like oil and yeah. whatever next to I remember going to the comic book store every week to get maximum carnage because he was on all four of the Spider Man uh, but, you know, different comic books. Yeah. And I still have that entire series of Maximum Carnage. I still have the first print of Carnage's first appearance. I have the first print of Venom's first appearance. I have the, the interaction of when Venom, when his suit goes on to Cletus Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, oh, and like, yeah, so I'm just all. so embedded with that in my mind of, okay, they were in jail together and that's how they got the, the suit. But yet, you know, this there's is no not Spider-Man. That. It's, it's gonna be bad. different. My question is: So Tom Hardy is uh, is Venom, and, and Woody Harrelson is Carnage. Who is this? <clears throat> who's this Spider Man? Which Spider Man? Is it a Spider Man that we've seen? Is this the Tobey Maguire Spider Verse? Is this the Andrew Garfield Spider Verse? Is it the? It's gonna Tom... be the Tom Holland. It has to be Tom Holland. Well, do you think it's... that they'll eventually dovetail, or is this something like like a? Because you know that with Into the Spider Verse, right, which is the most successful Spider Man movie, not a part of the MCU, in my opinion, right. We have this idea that there is a multiverse, and Marvel, of course, occupies a world where there's a multiverse. So, I don't know that it's necessarily a given that it's that it is. I hundred percent agree. Although I do understand where you're coming from, Michael. It seemed like the obvious thing is like Tom Holland well, is yeah. uh, like you know going to be the Spider-Man. You're not but it's, another Spider-Man. But what hey, I'm saying you, is we have these other we, ha- we have the other Spider-Man. We have the arms. We still have uh, Andrew Garfield who. Right. Can, Right. It, 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 be- he could be an adult Peter Parker because remember it was an adult Peter Parker in like the the books and stuff. So I mean it's and it, with 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 the multiverse happening with Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. it's not a high, it's not far off where they could still do that. You're not going to really have Tobey Maguire coming back in it. The guy yeah. is too. Well, you know, he could be. But here's the thing: is that you can do a lot of stuff with this because you could have a 40 year old Peter Parker and a 29 year old Peter Parker and a 17 year old Peter Parker. They can exist in the same movie. So my question is: if you dropped Tom Holland's Peter Parker into this, would it be what would it would it be out of place? Because it seems to me that the vibe is very different from the rest of the MC, which is a lot shinier. Oh yeah, yeah. It's well, a lot. This I is guess a lot it grittier. depends who writes Tom Holland into it. You know, if it's Kevin Feige. Writing Tom Holland to it, I'm all for it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't have an idea that Kevin Feige wants anything to do with this. So, you know? right. so the question but, but is, in, but in the one respect, I mean, you you think Morbius is going to be linked in here somehow? Yeah. And then Michael Keaton is in yeah. Morbius. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As the Vulture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So I, I I could see it being the Tom Holland verse. To me, it feels grittier. It feels like some unspoken spider, you know, this is some unspoken spider verse that we're not, you know what I mean? Where Spider-Man's more secretive. I don't think he has the Stark tech, the Stark tech. So it seems like just something different, right? So maybe that this is the shades of a heretofore unknown spider verse, uh, perhaps. So, so Tom Holland may not be playing an MCU version, but he is playing a version of Spider-Man in this universe. So that's a possibility, you know. You can split it however you want. That's what's yeah. so cool about comic books. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. You could do it. possible. Yeah. And if you yeah. hate, dies, and if you hate the possible. output, you can spend seventy-five million dollars on a redo. That's how it is. No, it doesn't, and it doesn't even feel weird. It's just like, oh, this was like the variant cover. <laughs> We're all just like, cool. Yeah, it's the one with the uh, with the uh, foil on the, on the front, right? The foil. Right. Cover. It's the one that came in the baggie that you're not supposed to open. 
But you why did you open it, Andy? In. Why did you open all my cut? No, I'm just kidding. It's, a, it's amazing to me that the first movie did good enough to spawn a second movie. You know, that's I, uh, it's just mind boggling. I mean, that, that's just the realm of comic books that we're living in. I mean, uh, I mean, the Fantastic you, Four had a sequel. I, I mean, mean, it makes you wonder how much of production cost is figuring out how to do stuff anymore, not so much doing it. You know what I mean? Because it makes you think like if they're making all these sequels, it has to be because they're cost effective in some way. Some way or other, right? It's got to I mean, they, they make do, a lot of movie uh, overseas, a lot of money overseas. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think you're absolutely correct, Hitch. Um, they figure out a way to actually do the thing without actually making the thing be, you know, as, as good as it can be or whatever. You know, making the thing be good is is uh, afterthought. Let's just make the thing. Is yeah. hopefully, <laughs> and hopefully it's, it sticks, you know. And, was, and this is what happened, I, I right. guess. I think Sony and you got to has... leave a cliffhanger at the end of the thing for yeah. people oh, to want man. more. Yeah, but I think Sony has a handle on what works, and it's it's the it's the you know more the into the Spider Verse Spider Man than than this other stuff. And I think they're leaning into the right thing. So we'll see where you know yeah. maybe they'll we'll, we'll see. see where they end up. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. It's it's yeah. it's not it's not the worst thing. You know, though, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to getting back to the movies and seeing movies in the theaters this yeah. year and everything. So, um, this is this is something to to, to maybe you know. <laughs> Maybe you go to the show and see. We'll see. We will. Yeah. It may, it doesn't have to be an opening weekend event, but no, you know. <laughs> no, definitely not for me. It doesn't uh-uh. have to be a starter. No, um, no, no. I will be there for Black Widow opening weekend though. Ah, <laughs> oh, great. You guys are gonna fill my MCU July has list. my money. <laughs> take yeah, it. They are taking it. it. Take it, take it, take it, take my money, MCU. Oh, you already have it. Okay. All right, all right. So, so that's a. I mean, that's a. We should probably wrap it up. We've been on here yeah. for a while. Uh, you know, we'll be back. Uh, next episode is going to be you know next set of Invincible. We cut it at two here. We'll have to do three at least. So we'll do at least three episodes of Invincible yeah, for a next uh, cycle through. Uh, check out our other show on our feed on YouTube, which is Carbonite Bounty BS. I don't control that show as much, so it's better. And uh, anybody else? Final shots, Michael. You got anything you want to tell the lovely people that tolerate us? Show him your venom again. Yeah, show him. Show us your toys. Yay, toys! He has all the toys. He's got. Them. <laughs> I see them. How about you, DP? You got anything? Any final thoughts? Hey, got I got anything nothing. to promote or anything like that? You oh yeah, know? hey, make sure that you guys are uh, the, the, the the my Kickstarter for Theme of Thieves. The Theme of Thieves starts May eighteenth. All right, good. So that <laughs> he did right as soon as he got out the date. So check it out on May 18th. Uh, you know, we're, we're coming right to the end of this year. So we're just going to go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, No Psycho Comic Flick Show and CFS for uh, this one, two, and Venom uh, trailer. See you later. Bye. Everybody freeze. Freeze frame. Nerdcyclopedia.